Oh, hello. <laughs> Sorry, just looking outside here. I like the view. I'm today. I'm going to be talking about seven tips to help you sell more stuff. You got this nice picture behind me as my backdrop. So um, <laughs> the seven tips are seven emotions that you should tap into if you're copywriting or selling to uh, drive people to action. So number one, fear or insecurity. Fear and insecurity are pretty much going to work for every market and there's different ways you can tap into them. So, so uh, tapping into people's, like, let me just back up. It's, it's kind of like, I didn't like this at first using like negative emotions to kind of like push people uh, or manipulate you might say but one thing you have to know in selling is that if your solution is actually helping someone then you're doing them a favor even if you have to like s like twist the knife to get them to act so with that said fear is pretty much the biggest um, the biggest part of our brain, I guess. Like, we are evolved to think in terms of fear and we want to avoid pain. That's like, it's basic like human motivation. You either are going towards pleasure or away from pain, or like, if you're like most people, you're probably a mix of both. Some people are all towards pleasure, some people are all towards pain. And as far as insecurity goes, well, Insecure, everybody has insecurities and if you can kind of um, subtly hint at those and s say like how your product is going to uh, save you <laughs> like get rid of these insecurities well then it's going to be a lot more compelling to buy so number two number two <laughs> I don't know why I'm walking around so much in this video I'll just keep sitting back down number two is your um, hopes and dreams. Now it's like everyone has aspirations. Like this is on the other side of the spectrum from fears and insecurities. So you want to tap into people's hopes and dreams. And now you can do this through future pacing. So that could be something like imagine what your future will be like. You know when you wake up, and instead of saying oh, uh, Mondays, you're just like yeah, awesome. I get. Money coming in if you're selling money products, or imagine what you're when you look down and you have six pack abs, or imagine when you have a hot girlfriend. Like it's pretty basic stuff. Um, you can also tap into as number three. You want to tap tap into kind of like lust. Lust is very powerful, yeah, and some of these go back to like the seven deadly sins. So you got like lust, anger, resentment. These are super powerful, especially in like the financial markets. Um, they work big time there. Uh, so what else? Envy. <laughs> Pretty much every sev every one of the seven deadly sins that like the Bible or whatever it is talks about <laughs> to avoid. Like you can use those on people. <laughs> and I know it sounds kind of bad, but whatever. If it works, it works. I guess you don't have to do it, but people are still going to do it and they're still going to make a lot of money from doing it. So another one is uh, pain, but specifically emotional pain. So if you can figure out uh, what causes your clients or your prospects emotional pain right now, and then you can say, hey, this thing will solve it, then, you know, it's just like, oh, wow, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> um, let's see. What's a good example? Like, just, okay, like, say, take the dating niche. Um, a huge pain point for guys is, you know, you can't get a girlfriend. This goes for women too. Like, oh, you can't find a boyfriend. You can't get a girlfriend. Uh, you're lonely. Um, you're sad and you think you're pathetic or something like that. Like, these are all super emotionally painful subjects. And, like part of selling, they call it, what I learned and when I was doing door-to-door -door selling is uh, problem agitation solution or problem reaction solution. 
So essentially, this is a formula that will work. Uh, it works great in every selling context. So the problem, you, you talk about the problem, say, oh, like, are you single and lonely? It's like, boom, it brings the problem to the top of their mind. And then agitation is uh, d diving deeper into the implications of that problem and making it a bigger problem than it is. Or maybe it is already a huge problem and you're just bringing it to the top of their, the forefront of their mind and really, like I said, twisting the knife. It's just agitating problem and making it bigger. And then, of course, solution. You don't just leave them at that, they hate you. Uh, you give them something and say, hey, like now with my product or service, you can get rid of this problem. It's a pretty cool painting, by the way. Um, yeah, so you can get rid of this problem with this cool gizmo I'm selling. And, sorry, I have a green tea break here. Let's see, the next one is ego. Now, in the book, Breakthrough Advertising, which if you can find a copy of this book, it's, it's out of print now, but if you can find a copy of it, he talks about the three methods of um, persuasion. So you have your their desires, which is kind of, you know, I, I want a faster car, I want to be in great shape, or I want a hot girlfriend, that's desires, everyone has them. Um, in, he talks about channeling them, but what I'm talking about here is the second part is identity. So, um, for an example he gives in this book, it's, a, it's an old book, but it's still great, is the old cigarette commercials and the, the Marlboro Man, like, <laughs> they put tattoos on their hands in these cowboys and to make people want to identify with, um, he calls it like virility and like manliness, I guess. But that's what you're looking for kind of with the ego. You want it, it's kind of hard to do it like overtly, but you can do it with your images or your vid like your video. Um, it's, you're, you don't want to come out and explicitly say like, hey, if you buy this, like women will love you uh, way more or something. Um, but you got to find a way to tie it into their ego because that's, it's the second huge part of persuasion. The third is uh, belief. So another pain you can, I think just the seven deadly sins is, is seven right there, but to go beyond that, so you have your fears and pains, hopes and dreams, your ego, your emotional pain, uh, your lust, anger, resentment. Another one is shame. Sh shame is a, a great one. <laughs> um, I, I feel like such a dick for saying these ones. Shame, um, you know, it works. Like you, you hear about it, if you have ever been to a seminar where they pitch something at the end, they usually say how you like, you are a piece of shit right now for not buying this product. They make you feel like shit and uh, it works. Like shame and guilt, like guilt is, <laughs> there's, a, there's a certain list, um, at, like Dan Kenny's list of which emotions, his, his go-to emotions is like fear, guilt, shame, <laughs> anger, like hopes and dreams, and then the other ones. So the next emotion that you want to add to your sales copy message presentation is huge across pretty much every niche that involves making money uh, in business to business. Uh, it's coarse greed. <laughs> You're probably like, why didn't you just, like, you probably just only use greed and fear. Um, you know, this isn't really a video to explain why people are greedy. Um, if you think in terms of evolution, evolutionary psychology, it's because we come from a background with scarce resources and we've just been hardwired to kind of, kind of hoard stuff. Anywho, you want to tickle their greed glands. That's what John Carlton says. And uh, I don't know why about that saying makes me happy. <laughs> um, so yeah, make sure you get greed in there. And the next emotion that you want to make sure you get is the feeling of frustration or being stuck. If you can kind of say like, well, just to kind of clarify, there's, um, there's something you want to do before you write copy. And you'll see this with different niches uh, especially business opportunity. If you go on ClickBank and you look at VSLs that are already performing, you'll 
or sales letters that is, uh, you'll see that some of them are super like over the top, like crazy hype. Like I, I seen this one letter for a business opportunity to make like a thousand bucks a month from your home. And it was the most like insanely over the top letter ever. Um, I think that's the wrong approach because you want to zero in on the emotion that your prospect is feeling and that should determine your copy. So if they're only feeling frustrated or if they're pissed or if they're like somewhere in between or if it's only kind of annoying, like you got to take all these things into account. So one good thing is pretty much everyone is feeling frustrated or stuck in some part of their life. And it's pretty much a catch all if you add that in there, like, oh, like I was working at a job I hated, surrounded by a bunch of jerks and my boss was mean to me and he, I hated waking up, but I felt like I couldn't go anywhere. So, <laughs> and then I found this cool invention <laughs> or whatever the hell it is. Um, pretty much everyone's feeling that frustration. And I guess the last one I'll include here is <laughs> revenge. Um, revenge is like a, it's a funny one. It's, it's almost like a, another need that people have. If, um, if they've been, they felt they've been cheated in the past or if they felt like if they're not where they want to be right now in their life. Um, it's, you got, it's like installing a us versus them kind of storyline, I guess it's which it's, it's super persuasive because a lot of people feel like it's not their fault that they are at where they're at in their life. Um, and they want an outside source, like an outside scapegoat to blame. So if you could say, Hey, it's not your fault that you're not where you're at today. You know why? It's because these gurus out here are telling you t that you should be on, you should be blogging and you should be, you know, flyering outside and doing Google AdWords and all this stuff. And they're all wrong. What you really need to do is one thing and one thing only. And that is blank <laughs> email drops. Who knows? Um, yeah. But anyway, if you can come at revenge from that angle and create a kind of us versus them, create a villain. It doesn't have to be an actual person. It can be, uh, it can be a characteristic. It could be laziness. It could be, uh, it could be the government. It could be anything, but come at revenge from that angle. And then that will make your copy super persuasive. Plus it takes, um, you, you want to, um, I guess you could say, exonerate them from their, from having, taking responsibility from, for being where they're at. <laughs> it goes completely against what you learn in personal development, but when you're selling, that's what you want to do. Okay. So to just kind of run through them again, I know I list off a lot here. You have your fears and insecurities. You have your hopes and dreams, your, your emotional pain, like pain's a big one, but emotional pain's a huge one. Um, you have your ego driven things. You have seven deadly sins. You can include them all like lust, anger, resentment, uh, shame. That's not a seven dead. I don't even know what they are. <laughs> I should probably look that up. Note to self, uh, envy, you know, and then you have your frustrations, guilt, greed, uh, all the, all the good ones there. So I hope that helps you if you include them all in your copy in some way or another. Yes, it feels kind of shitty, but if your product is helping someone, you know, if it's going to improve their life, they're going to thank you for it. <laughs> they're not going to be like, Hey, you manipulated me into improving my life. You're an asshole. No one's ever said that. So with that said, I hope you like this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.